my name is Evie Lupine. Welcome back to my channel and today I have another video for you all. Today we are going to be revisiting a subject that I used to have a pretty controversial opinion about and that would be soft dominance, also called gentle dominance. This term actually came up a couple of times when I was doing my research for the video I did on alpha submissives and I thought to myself, you know, it's been a couple of years, maybe I should check it out again, just kind of see how it's evolved and try to answer some core questions that people have about the term. What makes a soft dominant? What isn't a soft dominant? Is it even really a thing in the BDSM community? And the answers I found were pretty interesting. So let's go ahead and dive into it. So first for my own history with this term, I think the first time I came across Cross it was probably on Tumblr and anything that I originally found related to BDSM on Tumblr I was immediately skeptical of because if you know you know that was before they had nuked all of the adult content off of the website at first and uh, you know Tumblr had a very interesting relationship with kink it gave us things like safe for work pet regression so I was like eh, I don't really necessarily know about this. And I was just, again, I was pretty skeptical about it. And besides my own opinion, it was basically immediately contentious. You had one side saying that this is a necessary term that is actually giving a label to an underserved part of the community. And you had the other side arguing that it could actually be destructive and harmful and reinforces negative stereotypes. But before we get into that argument and settling that debate possibly, I wanted to see if I could find out where it came from because I was pretty sure it didn't start on Tumblr. So what was it? Was it a blog, a book, maybe a viral post on FetLife? And unfortunately, I wasn't really able to find a lot of solid information about where exactly the term started. What I did discover though is that soft dom as a general Google search term originally had some interest around 2009 and then sort of dropped off until it started to spike in popularity around 2019. This does seem to be somewhat correlated with another related term which would be gentle femdom that originally had some interest starting in 2014 and then really took off starting in about 2018. 2019. Now, for the record, in this video, I know that gentle femdom is related to this, but is also separate. And because I am just a female submissive, I do not dom, I don't really top female dominance, things related to what would be gentle femdom or things like that are not really in my wheelhouse. I'm going to be talking about all of this from a gender neutral perspective. And so if there are unique differences that are just tailored for gentle femdom in particular, I might not necessarily get to that in this video. But regardless, it does seem like these terms are getting increasingly popular and more people are looking for them and talking about them. So what are they saying? What are people talking about with soft dominance? What makes something soft dominance versus other styles of domination? And it really looks like the core of soft dominance is an emphasis on nurturance rather than expectations of strict obedience or heavy punishment. There does seem to also be a focus on encouragement and growth using praise and positive reinforcement as the primary tools. This is typically contrasted with so-called hard dominance, which is seen as more emotionally distant, cold, or selfish. However, that doesn't necessarily mean that a soft dom doesn't have expectations. It's simply the fact that when it does come to reinforcing the boundaries of the relationship, they are more likely to take a proactive carrot approach rather than reaching for the stick. And speaking of sticks, it does seem that the use of physical punishment is 
pretty controversial. You have some people that say that any kind of physical punishment goes against the very nature of being a soft dominant. You have other people that say that certain things like maybe a light flogging or a light spanking is okay so long as it doesn't go too far. And then you have other people that say that basically anything should be okay as long as you go about it with the spirit of soft dominance in mind, going about it with a lot of praise and encouragement encouragement and emphasizing pleasure rather than trying to get someone to cry or push pain boundaries. They also tend to emphasize maybe more affectionate aftercare and overall tend to have a bit of a kinder, sweeter approach to their dominance. Obviously though, soft dominance is not only about scenes, it can also be about power exchange. And in that realm, once again, we do see that emphasis on encouragement and growth. And that doesn't necessarily mean again, that there isn't rules or any sort of expectations there that can be the case, even strict rules. However, the rules tend to be more catered in that growth direction and for the submissive's benefit. So for contrast, in a soft dominant relationship, you may see more rules that are like, you must say two positive things about yourself every day versus when the master comes home, the slave will kiss the master's boots. To ensure compliance, a soft dominant may be more likely to do things like a stern talking to or just using good old fashioned disappointment instead of reaching for the whip. They may also be more apt to ask a submissive to do something rather than barking orders. Now, obviously the style of dominance is not going to be for all submissives. If you are a brat, this probably isn't going to suit you particularly well, but it is something that may work for other people. Now, if you've been listening to this video and you have some level of familiarity with the BDSM community, you may be thinking to yourself, wait, isn't this just being a caregiver? Isn't this just being a service top? Don't we already have words for these things? And I totally get where you're coming from. For example, with caregiver, there is a lot of overlap, especially in the areas of encouragement and nurturance. However, caregivers, don't necessarily have to be nice. They can have a very tough love approach. They can even have an attitude that's more along the lines of get me a switch from the yard. And I can very much vouch for that kind of approach to caregiving. Some of the most intense scenes I have ever witnessed have been caregiver mommies paddling their littles. Also, for people that prefer the term soft dominance, a lot of them also point out that caregiver is really strongly associated with certain types of role play, namely pet play and CGL or DDLG, and that's not really their thing, and they don't necessarily want to give the wrong impression that they engage in that type of role play. When it comes to service tops, again, I do think there is some reasonable overlap there. Service tops do tend to focus on what their partner wants. They tend to be very pleasant your focus tend to even incorporate things like praise and encouragement and overall just tend to be less demanding. However, the difference is kind of in the name. Service tops are generally tops. They don't necessarily incorporate power exchange in what they do or have entire relationships that are based off of service topping. It may be something they do sometimes, but isn't necessarily core to who they are in the world of BDSM and soft doms tend to also incorporate power exchange into their relationships and maybe have it as more of a core thing that they engage in. Now, of course, what I'm saying with caregivers and service tops is very individual. There are service tops that do have service topping as the primary or only thing that they do. And you do have caregivers that are functionally also just soft doms, but it all depends on individual interpretation. One other lexical question I wanted to answer is what is the difference between a soft dom and a gentle dom? I wasn't really able to find an answer for this on my own. So I did ask you all over on Twitter for how you use the term and what you think the difference might be. I had a lot of people tell me they just use the terms interchangeably and they don't really see them as different. I had some people tell me that gentle is when you don't inflict pain. And then other people said that 
that no soft is when you don't inflict pain. I also had other people describe that soft is the type of play that you're doing and gentle is how you go about doing that play. So there might be a difference, there might not, it doesn't really seem to be a settled issue. Now let's go ahead and go back since we have laid all of the base work here to that original question. Is soft dominance an actual useful term or is it more likely to simply create more boxes and division and reinforce stigma? For those that are against using the term soft, they typically argue that what is soft is very subjective and very dependent upon an individual person's limits. So for one person, they might consider spanking to be soft because it can be done in a loving and gentle way. Yet for other people, spanking would be entirely out of the question because it reminds them of childhood physical abuse. Pain itself is also a very subjective experience. What is one person's eight or nine on the pain scale is someone else's four. It can even vary for individual people from day to day. Not to mention that a lot of different types of play, even most of them I would argue, can be done in a soft or hard fashion depending on how you go about it. It can be entirely possible to do a lighthearted and funny whipping scene and an emotionally intense intense, torturous sensation play scene. It's all about how you go about doing something. So for people that are against using the term soft dom because of this, what they really say is that because everything is so subjective, it doesn't really make sense to pre-label something before you've even had a conversation to define what that personally means for you. Others go a step farther, not just doubting its usefulness, but also saying that it might be harmful. Because unfortunately, there are some people that use the term soft dominance as a way to put down so-called hard BDSM practitioners, saying they're cold, uncaring, or selfish. They might even say that things like consensual non-consent, or CNC, or permanent marking, or master-slave relationships are are just inherently unethical. They seem to believe that doms that don't identify as soft are less able to love their partners or don't have moments of tenderness or are just looking to get off and don't really care about what happens to the other person. In many ways, this reflects the extreme negative stereotypes that some vanilla people have about dominance and in particular sadists, that they're all just secret psychopaths that are trying to find a convenient way to get people to manipulate and abuse. And unfortunately, the brunt of this stereotype does seem to be directed in particular at female dominance, especially those that happen to do it professionally, simply because they choose to do it for money instead of for love, or because of how they've been stereotyped for decades in pornography, despite how they might individually describe themselves. Of course, this could also be some kind of overcorrection thanks to the heavy air quotes doms we have seen represented in recent media like Fifty Shades of Grey or 365 Days, but I don't think that's the only thing going on here. It's like, in some cases, they don't believe that a relationship between a masochist and a sadist could truly be mutually beneficial, that someone could genuinely enjoy pain, that someone that's saying, no, stop, please don't, might actually be enjoying themselves. In this way, soft becomes synonymous with good or safe and hard with bad or dangerous. However, the fact is, someone who labels themselves as a soft dom online could be just as much of a threat, and having this label may even lend a false sense of security. Not to mention, this also removes the inherent wonderful complexity of kink relationships. By creating a firm line between hard and soft, you therefore create boxes that people are expected to adhere to based on subjective judgment. That means you have hard doms that would never deign to lavish praise onto their submissive and would never coo over them after they are drooling once a good scene is completed. That means you also have soft doms that would never dare to attempt humiliation play or a bloodletting scene, even if they would really want to because that goes against what being a soft dom is supposed to be about. I've seen this kind of separation happen in the pet play community. I think it's relaxed in recent years, but back in the day, people used to freaking 
tie themselves up into pretzels thinking they could only be one kind of pet or only do pet play this one way. And if you did anything else outside of that, you were likely to experience social judgment simply because you wanted to do your pet play a little bit differently. Now, I think some of that is going to be people that are newer to the kink scene trying to enforce boundaries around this is kink and this is not. And that does tend to lessen over time, like I said, but it is still a problem. But even in the unconventional alternative world of kink, many of us still feel a pressure to conform, especially when we are trying to impress other people. And so the concern is by adding additional boxes, we're also adding to that pressure. And in particular, if this is coming from unaddressed internal biases about the ways that other people may be engaging with their kink, that is functionally trying to shut out and shame a pretty good section of our community. Not to mention as well, at worst, this could be an attempt at vanillifying kink to make it more palatable to a wider audience, which I don't think anyone really wants. In reality, most doms are going to be a mix of hard and soft being really proud of their partner's accomplishments, putting their doodles on the fridge, but also enjoying beating their ass purple when it's necessary. Even someone that primarily identifies as a soft dom may find there are times where a firm hand and a stern voice is the more appropriate way to lead. So in the end, what do I think about all of this? Is it useful or is it hurtful? Well, I think if you would have asked me this question a couple of years ago, I likely would have leaned hard in the latter's direction. However, because I have gotten to have a couple of years to really observe where this term has gone, I don't really think it's become the worst case scenario. It hasn't overtaken the BDSM community or really caused, I think, a lot of hurtful shaming or shutting other people down. Now, I haven't mentioned this yet, but just for the record, I don't think I've ever heard anyone mention this term outside of the online community. I'm not saying it doesn't exist outside of that, but I've never had a conversation or a discussion group as of yet where someone has mentioned this in real life. Now, I don't think this is going to be a term that I use for myself because for me personally, I really have the philosophy that kink relationships should be designer relationships. And so I don't like to sort of weigh things down too much with having a lot of extra labels I add on to something before having a conversation about what those things mean. So I don't really think I'm going to use it, but I can see how it is useful for people that it can fit into a niche where caregiver doesn't really fit and service top doesn't really fit. And so long as people are doing the work to address their own internal bias, have that introspection about why they're choosing to use this term. I don't really think there's gonna be a problem with that. Of course, every one is going to be subject to their own internal bias, whether that be because they're a master and slave kind of a person or a pet player or DDLG or what have you. Everyone has to do that work of introspection. And when it comes to soft dominance, I don't think that's really any different. So those are all my thoughts about soft dominance or gentle dominance. I would love to know what you all think about this in a comment down below. I am sure it's gonna get spicy. I just am so excited to see what you all have to say. If you did enjoy this and you wanna make sure to not miss out on any other video videos from me. If you have not already, you can go ahead and subscribe because I make videos twice a week about all sorts of kink and BDSM related content. And finally, if you really enjoyed this, if you want to support what I do, you can go over to my Patreon. A link to that will be down below. If you do already support me over there, thank you so, so much. It means the absolute world to me. And until I see you all next time, I hope you have a great rest of your day and a great rest of your week. Bye-bye.